Hi friends, welcome to the start of a new Slayerfest weekly reading vlog. It is Saturday, April 15th, much later at night, hence why it is so dark in here. I'm sorry for the lighting, but it's much better this way than if I turned on that overhead lighting, because if I turned on that overhead lighting, it would be just super bright, like shining down on me. Also, I'm sorry if you can barely hear me over the motorboat that this guy is. His per box is just going. When Archie wants snuggles, Archie gets snuggles. I actually wasn't planning on opening this vlog until tomorrow when I was doing my formal filming of videos because I want to wrap up the last three books that I read in March as my final recent reads type video because I'm not going to be doing those anymore and so I was just going to open this vlog at that time but I just kind of felt like chit chatting a little bit because I've had kind of a blah mental health day and so I just kind of wanted to come on here and chit chat with my friends you know it's kind of one of those days where I feel like I'm going backwards at everything that I'm trying rather than forwards like I'm seeing all these people around me people that I'm friends with and that I root for and I'm genuinely happy for but like also I'm I'm trying to achieve some of the same things that they are but yet they're progressing so much more quickly than I am and so there's definitely like a jealousy factor there and there's definitely a discouragement there it's just one of those days where I've kind of lost some motivation to do certain things I'm really just trying to get out of my head about it because I know it's it's all in my head and like tomorrow is going to be a better day and things are going to be looking a lot different you know but I don't know I'm just feeling discouraged about certain things in life right now I really don't have a reading update for you guys at this time I've only gotten slightly further into King of Crows by Libra Bray. I haven't really had much opportunity at all to listen to that book today. I've spent a lot of time editing today and also planning things for the Magical Readathon. And not only that, but I also plan on doing the year-long challenge that they're hosting as well as some of the side quests that they're doing because I'm not already doing enough challenges, right guys? I just want to make this reading year as stressful as possible. So it's just been kind of like an administrative day. I just was trying to think of some things that could get me out of this funk that I'm feeling and I was like, let me go and get on and film a clip. Let me open the vlog. And then as soon as I sat down, this little chunky monkey decided that he needed snuggles. And so he's going to be mad when I have to get up in a second. Oh my goodness. I'm going into toppings. I'm oh, he's biting me. <gasps> you see that? He comes on me and he invades my space and then he bites me. I'm going into toppings. <gasps> he's so mad right now. He's gone. Anyway, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and knock out a chapter of We of Kings and I will check back in with you tomorrow. Hi friends, happy Sunday. So as promised, I wanted to come on here and quickly do a wrap up of the last three books that I read in March. I will not be continuing with the recent reads video series on my channel anymore. I will be moving to an end of month wrap up instead, just because I don't think very many people are enjoying or liking the recent reads. But I did hear from people that do like the recent reads that the reason they like it is because they like the in-depth reviews that I'm giving for the books. And I don't plan on having that change at all. So my wrap ups might be on the lengthier side, but you know, we're gonna roll with it. If it takes a long time, it takes a long time. It is what it is. So the first one I have to talk to you about today is Their Survivors by Jane Harper. So this is definitely more on the mystery side. It is really not all that suspenseful or thrilling. It is about a man named Kieran and about, I want to say, maybe 12 years prior to the start of the story, he was involved in an accident that ended up taking the life of his older brother and his older brother's best friend, who just happened to be the older brother of Kieran's best friend. So there's definitely been a lot of loss within this small town within these families. And Kieran ended up moving away from the town. He is now married, he has a child, and things are going good for him, but there's still a lot of guilt that he feels surrounding what happened all of those years ago. And he is having to go back to his hometown to help his mother. His mother is struggling because his father now has dementia and he is deteriorating, and so they kind of have to pack up and move their lives because his father has to move into like a senior assisted living facility and his mom wants to be near him. So he's going back home to help his mother with all of this. And of course, there are a lot of memories resurfacing. There are some people that are not happy to see him there because they kind of blame him for the accident that happened and then all of a sudden another body washes up and so this is really about figuring out what happened to the body that washed up on the beach and it also ties into what happened so many years ago. I don't really have a lot to say about this book honestly. I remember that this was a fairly positive reading experience and that I wasn't bored while I was reading it or anything but there was also never anything astonishing about it. There wasn't anything propelling me forward. There wasn't anything that made me dying to pick up the book so it wasn't remarkable. It was a good reading experience overall but 
but it was also a forgettable reading experience. I don't remember much that happened in this book and I didn't remember much even immediately after reading this. So unfortunately this is one that just got a three stars. So it wasn't a bad book. It just wasn't anything that's going to stick with me over time. However, one that I loved and I really, really enjoyed was Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is a YA sci-fi novel that follows our main character, Spensa. And in this world, humanity has basically been driven to extinction. 80 years prior to the start of this novel, what was left of humanity was basically driven to this planet called Detritus. They were driven there by this alien race known as the Krell. And since that time, they've basically been in this never ending war with the Krell. The Krell are trying to finish what they started and humans are not going to let that happen. Because of that, in this world, fighter pilots are the heroes. You know, they're the ones that go up into space and fight the Krell. And Spensa has wanted to be a pilot her whole life. But the problem is, is that Spensa's father was a pilot and he apparently deserted his crew. Like he fled, he himself was shot down and killed. And so because of that, Spensa has basically been branded the child of a coward. And so by extension, she herself is a coward. And she doesn't think she will ever be able to fly like she wants to. She doesn't think she's ever going to be able to be a pilot. But she ultimately ends up being allowed in a class of people who are training to be pilots. And it's about her journey as she tries to become a pilot in this world. She's trying to overcome her father's legacy, but also prove that wrong. Like she doesn't believe her father was a coward. She believes that there is something more to the story that is not being told. And she is determined to clear her father's name and prove them wrong, or at least prove them wrong about her. Like she doesn't want to be held down by her father's legacy because she is not her father. This is really a lot about her time in flight school and what they have to deal with in flights and fighting the Krell and the people that are lost and the dangers and things like that. And I enjoyed this immensely. I really did. This was fast paced. It was action packed. It was really engaging, full of colorful characters that I loved, not the least of which was Emba. Oh, and then there was Doom Slug, this very sassy slug that would imitate Spensa and the sounds that she made. I very much enjoyed flying through space with Spensa and the other cadets. And I'm very much looking forward to being back in this world with the sequel. I believe there are going to be four total books in this and two and three are already out with the fourth one about to come out. So I will absolutely be continuing in this series. All right. And then the last book that I have to talk to you about today is Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. So this follows our main character, Georgina Geo Shaw. And at the very start of the story, she is actually being tried as an accomplice to murder. So when she was just 16 years old, 15 years prior to the start of the story, she was wrapped up in this very toxic, abusive relationship with an older man who was 21 at the time. And his name was Calvin James. During her relationship with Calvin James, something happened that led to the death of Angela Wong, who was Gio's best friend. She was a popular girl in school. She was the one that was well loved and everything, but she ended up dead. She went missing. Nobody ever knew what happened to her. And then recently her body has been uncovered. And after it was uncovered, it kind of came out that Calvin James was actually a serial killer known as the Sweet Bay Butcher. And so now Gio is coming out and sharing her side of the story. She's sharing how she was involved in the death of Angela Wong. And so both she and Calvin are on their way to prison. She is going to prison for five years and then Calvin, you know, is supposed to go to prison probably for the rest of his life. But Gio is the only one who serves her time because shortly after they are sent to prison, Calvin escapes. And now Gio is getting out and there are some crimes happening that are very reminiscent of Calvin's crimes. So this is really a story about Catch Calvin, figure out if he is killing the people in the present day, if he's not, who is also uncovering what actually happened in the past. And I just thought that this was a solid story. It was well paced from start to finish. There was never really any lagging period. It was also tightly woven. So like all of the loose threads were tied up in the story and everything like that. And also she did a really great job of putting in breadcrumbs here so that if you were paying attention, you would likely be able to guess the twist. And even if you were able to guess the twist, I still thought it was a pretty, pretty good twist. I really liked the direction that she took the book and I definitely liked how she ended the book. I definitely liked the actions that she had Geo take to finally put all of this to rest. Like if you've read this and you've read the ending, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Like Geo ends up really putting to bed all of this stuff that has been going on throughout her life for the past 15 years. And I thought that it was just absolutely fantastic. And I gave this a solid four stars. All right, y'all, Oliver is here and he is begging to go outside. You can see him right there. He wants to go outside, so he's bugging me. So I need to get up, I need to go let him outside. And I also have to start doing chores and getting to editing and stuff like that. But I did want to wrap up these final books really quick for you. And now we'll just proceed with the monthly wrap up from now on. Anyway, I'll try to check back in later if I have a reading update. I'm not entirely sure. I am going to be listening to more of King of Crows as I'm doing my chores and stuff, but there's not really much I can say about this book because it's the fourth book in a series. Like it's the final book in the Diviner series. So, but you know, I'll give you an update when I have one.
Hey guys, so I am sitting here at work and I wanted to just do a quick update for you because I haven't talked anything more about the magical readathon. I spent some time over the weekend working out exactly how I wanted to participate and what the extent of my involvement in the challenges and side quests were going to be and everything. So I just wanted to take a minute and kind of show you. I have this really basic school notebook here that I'm kind of putting all the paperwork in. So I will go ahead and flip it around and show you. So I kind of mentioned this in the last vlog. This is what I'm focusing on in May because I didn't want to just jump right into the spring equinox because I wanted to take the time to like build my character, get my conduit and do all of that stuff. And I'm almost done with this. For the legacy, this is for the guild that I'm a part of. I have to pick an animal familiar and try to read a book that has it on the cover in the title or in the story. And I think I'm actually going to be using the King of Crows by Libba Bray to satisfy this because even though he's not like a big part of the story or anything, there is an orange tabby in there named Archibald and I actually have an orange tabby named Archibald. And so I love that. And I figured that I would go ahead and make him my familiar because I was planning on doing a cat of some kind anyway and so I figured an orange tabby would work and so I'm in the middle of satisfying this. This is the last one I really still need to satisfy. It is for my province or I read a book that features fae or elven characters and I plan on using Deadlands to satisfy this and I sure hope to get to that by the end of April and then I will basically be done with all of these beginning steps. Over here is a year-long challenge that is happening. It's Adventure in Aldia I believe and so each month there is a different prompt and so you start here in January and I could have either turn left which is start a series or turn right and in January I actually did end up starting a series Ninth House by Lee Bardugo and so I could either go to the forest and read a book with trees on the cover or I could go towards a lake and do water on the cover and they both lead to the same one so in February I actually did read Every Summer After which had water on the cover. I was trying to match these up as closely as I could to the months in which the prompt is featured since you know I only am just starting this now and then Fight a Giant a book over 500 pages and Skyward actually met that so so far this is turning out really well. In April there is no separate challenge because we are currently in the middle of like the spring equinox and stuff so I can have a break from it and then move on into May which will be book finishes um, on an even page number and I obviously don't know what that will be yet because I don't know for sure what I'm reading in May. And then here is the stuff for the spring equinox. I realized that my printer cut this off and so I need to reprint that. That's why that's not taped in. But this is the syllabus and I'm going to be a beast master and so here are some of the things that I need to satisfy. So for example I need to read the elemental studies prompt. So over here that would be to read a book with flowers on the cover. I have done absolutely no planning for this because I'm going to be fitting this in May. So this is what I'm going to be doing in May and so I'm going to also have to fit this in with my TBR and the challenges that I'm pulling as well as Slayer Fest. It's going to be a whole juggling act y'all but we're going to do it. And there is currently a side quest happening. It is the alchemy side quest and you can take as long as you need to to finish this. So there is no hurry but this is the first one and if you accept the challenge the prompt is to read a book with the word night in the title or nighttime on the cover and this actually comes at a very perfect time because I will be reading The Dark Corners of the Night by Meg Gardner as my next read. So I will be able to satisfy this pretty pretty soon and then move on into the next part of the side quest. So we're getting everything worked out with the Magical Readathon. I know it's very complicated with Slayer Fest and then my own personal TBR and all of the personal challenges that I'm trying to satisfy but I'm having a real good time trying to figure it all out. May's TBR is going to be wild. I'm actually filming that this coming weekend. We're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna have to like juggle a lot of things but it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be great. So I just wanted to pop on here really quick and give you that update. I don't really have any further reading updates. I read a couple chapters in The Way of Kings on my lunch break so I'm just plugging my way through that. Plugging my way through King of Crows and we're just making progress little by little. But now back to work. Hey y'all, it is Tuesday night. I'm sorry for the lighting because it's very dark outside. And also if I'm super shiny, it's because I just did my skincare. So my skin is looking real glowy right now, but I did it. I finished The King of Crows, the final book of the Diviner series. I pushed myself to finish this book. Normally it would not bother me at all to be taking four or five days to finish a book like this, but because I need to keep the momentum and because things just start building up, like holes keep coming in from my library and things like that, I need I need to get going. Overall, I really enjoyed the story. I have some mixed feelings about it and I'm kind of trying to sort through how I feel. For a lot of the book, the diviners are basically split up, but they're all heading to one location. Part of me understands why people didn't like that because it was very long. I will say that one of my main criticisms about this book is that it is very, very lengthy and it could have easily been shortened by probably quite a lot. I can tell you that it was a 22 hour long audiobook and it could have easily been shortened by several hours. And part of me is like, I don't necessarily understand why they had to be separated for so long. I think that is definitely a portion 
portion of the story that could have been shortened. But on the other hand, I do understand because throughout this time, diviners were kind of meeting new people and building allies that ultimately just helped them along on their journey, which was nice and sweet and everything like that. I will say that this book definitely felt like it had a lot more social commentary. Like I felt Libba Bray was using this as a way to kind of share her grievances about American history. And you can kind of even hear it in the author's note at the very end of this. And I'm torn between being upset about it, but also enjoying it because the way that she did it, she wove it through so poetically, but just the way that she included it, the way that she phrased it, it was very lyrical, very beautifully stated. But at the same time, some of it felt very preachy, very in your face. So that was a little bit frustrating at points, but again, so beautiful. Like her writing is just stunning in certain places in this book. In terms of how it ended, uh, overall, I feel like I was satisfied. I do feel like it ended rather abruptly. You know, we've spent four books trying to get to this spot and then ultimately it all resolves within like the last hour of the audiobook. I will say that there were definitely some very creepy scenes throughout this. A lot of this has to do with ghosts and an army of the dead. So there were some very creepy scenes. I will say very atmospheric, spooky scenes throughout this story. And there were, of course, some sadder moments at the end of the story as well. I didn't like cry or get teary or anything because I was never super emotionally invested overall in the characters. So I would say that my reading experience of this was very, very solid. Definitely four stars. I do have some grievances about it, like the in-your-face social commentary at points. The overall trajectory of the story was pretty good. Like I said, very long, could have been shortened. But as Aside from that, I really don't have any major complaints. I feel like it wrapped up all really nicely. I'm glad that I'm finally done with this series. And also I just realized that my dishwasher is going and you are probably going to be able to hear that in the background. So I'm really sorry. It's like white noise to me at this point. I don't even pay attention to it. So I'm really sorry if that's super loud. This satisfied the prompt of Wesley to read a YA book. This was also a challenge that I drew for myself for April. So we got another one checked off the list. And next is The Dark Corners of the Night by Meg Gardner, which will also finish a series. I think it's a completed trilogy. I could be wrong, but even if it's not a completed series, this is the only other one that is out at this time. So I will be completely caught up. It's basically just a detective series, an FBI agent series, you know, solving crimes as they do. I really like the first one, Unsub. Wasn't as impressed with the second one. So we're going to see how this third one goes. And this will satisfy the prompt of Zach Kralik to read a book that features a serial killer in some form, true crime or mystery thriller, whatnot. And I'm pretty sure that this is a serial killer. All right, why are my updates always so flipping long? It is definitely time to get ready for bed and I probably won't update again until I've gotten quite a bit into the dark corners of the night so stay tuned for that. Bye guys.
friends, it is Friday morning and I wanted to go ahead and come on here and update you because I just now finished, literally 30 seconds ago, The Dark Corners of the Night by Meg Gardner. I didn't update at all yesterday basically because I was just focused on finishing this book and I didn't really have much to say and I knew that if I came on midday to update you about it, my thoughts and feelings probably wouldn't have changed much between then and now so I just saved this update for when I had actually finished it. So if you're not familiar, this is a series of basically detective novels by Meg Gardner. It started with her first book of unsub. It follows our main character, Detective Caitlin Hendricks, and at the time she is hunting a serial killer that was based off the Zodiac Killer. Meg Gardner based him off the Zodiac Killer, and it kind of goes from there as she moves from detective into the behavioral analysis unit of the FBI. So she is now basically in the BAU, and it's kind of like an episode of Criminal Minds every single book. So when I started this book, I thought that it was the third and final book in a trilogy, but I recently heard Audrey from Chapter and Converse talk about another one that's likely going to be coming out, and after finishing the book, I can confirm that it did leave off on a cliffhanger and there will be another one coming. I have to decide whether or not I actually want to continue in the series. And so the reason why I say that is when I first started reading this book, I was not engaged with it at all. It wasn't really what I was wanting or what I was looking for. I used to be a huge fan of detective fiction because I love criminal investigation. I find it fascinating, all of the nuances, all of the research, all of the different things that they have to go through in order to solve a crime. And it's even more fascinating now that she's part of the behavioral analysis unit because it's all psychological. They're trying to create a profile of the perpetrator just based off of his actions alone. And so just seeing that methodology and how it all works and the nuances of that and the details, it is really, really interesting. But it is also at points very dry and detached. I am not feeling any emotional attachment to them. It's kind of one of the reasons why I've moved away from detective fiction because even though I really like the overall process of detective fiction, the overall investigation, I'm not getting a lot of the emotional aspects that I want from it. And so when I was reading this book, I was absolutely sure that if there was a fourth book, I wasn't going to continue with it. I just wanted to go ahead and finish the third book, get caught up, and then call it a day. But I will say that this book really, really picked up in terms of action and suspense within the last couple of hours of listening on the audiobook. So in this particular book, we're following Caitlin Hendricks, who is currently living in Virginia because she, again, is part of the FBI now. And she's going back to California. That's where the first book was set. That's where she was born and raised. And she's going back to hunt a serial killer who is basically breaking into houses at night, killing a mom and dad, and then tormenting the children with like messages and things like that. Never hurting the children, but like sending messages to them. And so you're following the BAU as they're trying to profile this criminal, decide who he is, what his motivations are, and then it really picks up once you determine who this person is. And then like the last hour and a half of this audio was just nonstop action-packed. It was probably one of the best action-packed pursuit scenes that I've ever read. And so I was really into it. I was really like on the edge of my seat wanting to know what happened. Meg Gardner is so talented at writing these stories. She's so talented with all of the details that go into an investigation and criminal profiling and everything like that. She just does such an amazing job with it. And so even though there is that detachment and sometimes that dryness to it, when it comes down to actually solving the crime in the pursuit of the killer and all of that stuff, you know, it's just really, really interesting. I think the fourth book might be the final one because I think we're finally going to get a resolution to something that was left open in the first book. And so if that's the case, I think I can probably see it through. All that to say, I ended up enjoying this one a lot more than I originally thought that I was going to. So I'm right now debating between a 3.5 and a four. I am now going to be starting Hunger Like No Other by Cressley Cole. This is the first book in her Immortals After Dark series. I believe it's what it's called. This is another paranormal romance that has been widely recommended to me when I was seeking those recommendations because I needed something to satisfy some reading challenges, including Oz for Slayer Fest, which features like mythological creatures or transfiguration shape-shifting. So we're going to go with that. I really have no idea what it's about. I'm just going to go into it and hope that I enjoy it. But for now, y'all, I have to go in and get to work. I think I may come on here one more time to close out the vlog. I'm not sure, but I want to go ahead and finish the vlog today because I already have a lot of editing to do and I know that if I just continue the vlog, it's going to get outrageously long. So just in case I don't come on here to give you another update, again, I hope that Slayer Fest is going well. I hope that you are enjoying participating and I hope that you are enjoying these weekly reading vlogs. If you are, I may be convinced to pick them back up and do them every single week going forward. So we'll see. But again, I will check in with you later and if not, I will see you in the next vlog.